This afternoon on the Rockbridge Report. The federal government officially shut down on Tuesday and it's not just Washington noticing changes. University admissions data help high schoolers choose their future. Find out which local university is investigating their statistics. And many area football teams have a bye week this weekend. Find out who is playing coming up on the Rockbridge Report. Breaking news, a brief lockdown on Capitol Hill has just ended. Tourist journalists and members of the Senate were instructed to shelter in place after reports of gunshots around 2.30 this afternoon. Police allege that a woman driving a black Lexus rammed into a White House gate. After a short chase, she was apprehended near the Capitol. One police officer was injured while attempting to stop the suspect. Congress was in session at the time of the events and they have since reconvened. Good afternoon and welcome to the Rockbridge Report. I'm Laura Lindsay Tatum. And I'm Sarah Jean Fallon. There's no sign of any break in the stalemate that's left the government closed. Even the latest efforts to find a solution are being called unproductive by, from both, by both sides from, from Washington, D.C. to Rockbridge County. People are discovering which offices and parks are closed because of the shutdown. And we took a look at the first implementation of Obamacare around the area. Brianna Keeler starts our coverage. For the first time since the government shut down, congressional leaders met face to face with President Obama at the White House Wednesday night, both sides emerging with no deal and no signs of progress to end the stalemate. The president uh, reiterated uh, one more time tonight that uh, he will not negotiate. We're through playing these little games. Republicans still demanding President Obama accept a delay to his signature health care program. All we're asking for here is a discussion and fairness for the American people under Obamacare. Am I exasperated? Absolutely I'm exasperated. In an interview with CNBC, the president reiterated he won't give in on Obamacare, but said he will negotiate on budgetary issues like taxes, spending, entitlement reform, if House Republicans first agree to reopen the government for several weeks. We have a situation right now where if John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, puts a bill on the floor to reopen the government at current funding levels so that we can then negotiate on a real budget that allows us to stop governing from crisis to crisis, it would pass. The president is probably right, but that's not happening anytime soon. Instead, House Republicans held votes again on funding the government in a piecemeal way that the Senate will surely reject. Meanwhile, not far from the Capitol, the World War II memorial, operated by the largely shuttered National Park Service, has become a proxy in this battle. To counter images of World War II vets showing up to the barricaded memorial, the Republican RNC National offering Committee. to pay to keep it open. Our veterans deserve the freedom to see this memorial, and we're willing to pay the bill. Now it's up to the president just to let them in. Brianna Keeler, CNN, Washington. Local officials are worried the shutdown could hurt local school systems and businesses. Reporter Frank Diaz explains why. Because of the government shutdown, nearly 800,000 federal workers are staying at home. That could delay some federal money that local schools depend on. Depends how, how much of their funding comes from federal uh, funding. And so for a poorer school district, that can be a relatively significant, say 20% of their funding. Washington and Lee University economics professor Tim Diet says, Rockbridge area schools could be among those who would have problems if the shutdown goes on long enough. Some examples is that folks may um, employ uh, reading assistance or they may even use it for traditional teachers. And so if that funding is cut off, they'll need to find other ways in order to pay those teachers. And so it really could put the school districts in a bind. Rockbridge area school officials could not be reached for comment after multiple phone calls were made. Some local businesses are already feeling the pinch from the shutdown because services along the Blue Ridge Parkway have been shut. Marty Mockaby works at Artisan Cahoots in Lexington, but a shop along the parkway also sells some of her artwork. Mockaby says if that store stays shut, her orders will suffer. Diet says local colleges, including Washington and Lee and Southern Virginia Universities, could also have problems with research grants and money for work-study students. And if any of those sources of federal funding dry up for students, or even if there are delays, right, it could significantly impact a student. For the Rockridge Report, I'm Frank Diaz. 
The shutdown could cost taxpayers more than $2 billion if it lasts as long as the one between 1995 and 1996, which lasted 27 days. The key bargaining chip leading to the shutdown has been the Affordable Care Act, which took effect earlier this week. Government websites are buckling under the number of people signing up for health insurance with the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare, as it's also known, went into effect on Tuesday, but 8% of Rockbridge area's population will probably still fall through the cracks. They make too much money to qualify for Medicaid, but they can't afford to buy coverage under the new act, so some could end up paying a new penalty for not getting insurance. In Rockbridge County, fire and emergency medical services have always been staffed by volunteers, but that may change if the county continues to have problems filling the squads. Reporter Neil Haggerty has the story. Rockbridge County is struggling to recruit volunteers in fire and EMS. County Administrator Spencer Souter said it may mean paying workers. That, in turn, could mean higher taxes for county residents. The call volume continues to go up and the, uh, the availability of time uh, for volunteers uh, is, is not as much as it used to be. The Fairfield and Glasgow rescue squads receive the highest number of emergency calls of all county rescue squads, but they are struggling to answer calls with small all-volunteer staffs. Somebody calls 911, we pull out of the driveway. By the time we pull out of the driveway, a second person calls 911. By the time we hit McDonald's on the way to some outskirt area, we got a third call. And so now that's three active calls that our station has and we're the only people responding. The city of Lexington, faced with similar staffing problems, consolidated fire and EMS in 2011. It also started paying volunteers by the call. Some of the county departments have also tried to compensate volunteers for their time with money from fundraisers. The Walker's Creek Fire Department cut response times by more than two minutes since they started paying volunteers. For a four hour uh, shift, they'll get $15. Uh, yeah, $15. For, a 30, for an eight-hour shift, they'll get $30 for spending time here at the station. And Glasgow Rescue Squad Chief Robert Hickman said any incentive for volunteers is worth trying. The demand for the service has far exceeded the amount of trained personnel available. The county is planning to hire a new director of fire and EMS soon. Souter said this should put the county in a better position to boost staffing. But residents could still face a tax increase when the county comes up with a solution. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Neil Haggerty. Lane closures on I-81 could bring traffic over the next few days. We'll tell you where to avoid next on the Rockbridge Report. And we'll have your weekend forecast, so stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. it's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their nine, kid, but they're not? Eight, seven, six. Parents who really five, know it all four, know for sure that their three, child is in the right two, seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. <laughs> watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Ever wonder what makes us, the Smurfs, so happy? The forest, of course. This is where we, along with the beautiful forest creatures, make our home with beautiful plant life, clean water, and endless adventures. It's a place to celebrate. So discover the forest with your family today. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
About 30 members of the Lexington community fulfilled its obligation to Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell last Saturday by slashing away plants along Woods Creek. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints led an all-day service project to remove invasive trees and plants along the banks of Woods Creek from Ross Road to Limekiln Park. The cleanup was part of the Governor's Day to Serve event, a project shared by governors of three states and the mayor of Washington. These warm temperatures are supposed to stick around for the next week. Kinsey has an important weather or important traffic update and weather now. Kinsey? Parents making their way to Lexington to visit students this weekend might get caught in some extra traffic. Interstate 81 will have alternating lane closures from mile marker 200 to Fairfield mile marker 202.5. Let's take a look at the current conditions in our area. As you can see, our neighbors to the north are experiencing temperatures just a few degrees cooler than we are here in Rockbridge, but most of Western Virginia is experiencing temperatures warmer than what we're used to in early October. Let's take a look at the radar. As you can see, very little is headed our way right now. Although we don't need the umbrellas today, that could change come Monday. Tropical Storm Karen is due to make landfall on the Gulf Coast this weekend. That will bring some rain to the Rockbridge area on Monday. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the five-day forecast. These warm temperatures should last into the weekend, but Washington and Lee students can look forward to beautiful conditions for parents' weekend. Although we will feel the effects of Tropical Storm Karen on Monday, Tuesday should bring back the early fall conditions that Rockbridge is used to. Thank you, ladies. Back to you. Thanks so much, Kenzie. Washington and Lee University is looking into its admissions policies. The university came under fire last week after a Washington Post article questioned how some colleges count applications. Reporter Margaret Volsky has the story. Washington and Lee University is looking into the way it measures admissions data. The university's acceptance rate for applicants came into question in a story in the Washington Post last week. At a school renowned for its honor system, students are wondering what is going on. The question on the table is, did we break any of our internal standards? Uh, and I guess also part of that question is, what are our internal standards? Nathan Kelly is the president of Washington and Lee's executive committee. The committee is charged with enforcing the honor system in the student body. Kelly thinks faculty and administrators should behave honorably too. We as students have the expectation that the faculty and administration hold themselves to those standards, and I think they do. A report found in the Washington Post says the university includes applications that were never completed in figuring its admissions rate. Critics of the practice say this makes the university appear more selective and prestigious than it is. Neither President Ken Ruscio nor admissions staff would comment for this story. But Ruscio has appointed a committee of administrators to look into admissions practices. University spokesman Jeff Hanna says it has never been an issue before. The way the reporting uh, organizations ask for us to tell them about applicants doesn't have to do with complete or incomplete. It has to do with whether or not we've received enough material that we can use to take action on an applicant. Lexington Mayor Mimi Elrod shares some of the students' concerns. People who are purchasing a college degree should be aware of everything that's going on because it's a really expensive endeavor. Colonel Beitzel of the Virginia Military Institute says that counting incomplete applications is common. What they do and what we do is, I'd say 90% of the schools in America do it the same way. The administrators Ruscio appointed will issue their findings by October 15th. Meanwhile, executive committee leaders are gathering student opinions. They will wait for the administrator's report before weighing in. The most popular opinion I've seen is that students do trust the administration and they trust that they are uh, being held to the, a similar high standard that we hold ourselves to. For the Rockridge Report, I'm Margaret Foltsky. Keep an eye out for a follow-up from the Rockridge Report once the committee's findings are published in mid-October. Lexington residents voiced their views about the Downtown Enhancement Plan earlier this week. Find out what they had to say coming up on the Rockbridge Report.
you want to do is have you already enrolled? You're doing fine. One of that just fail. Select, select the drop down menu again. Okay. Oh, you're already enrolled. Oh, Example here, so mm -hmm. don't panic. <laughs> you're ready to make your payments. Okay. There it is. Oh my god! Oh. I really can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs>